Like other superheroes, Power Rangers get occasional upgrades. These help the Rangers defeat stronger enemies, and give toy companies an excuse to make more action figures. One unique upgrade is the cockpit armor. Ranger teams before Samurai didn't need special padding to pilot Zords. However, these designs added some creative twists to existing suits. I'm Julio Coolio, and today, let's explore the history of Power Rangers Cockpit Mode. As a nearly 30-year-old show, Power Rangers has gone through many hands. One of these was Disney, who is actually embarrassed to have it in their gauntlet of domination. In 2009, they finally killed the show. But to keep toy sales going, they aired what were basically YouTube poops of the first season. You can still watch these on Netflix and YouTube, by the way. But Bandai had other plans, as they drafted new toys based on Shinkenger. They created a new power-up called Mega Mode, blending the Shinkenger designs with the armored look of the 1995 movie suits. These pictures were first leaked featuring the heads of Jason, Billy, and Tommy. Luckily for Bandai, Saban Brands bought back the series. Plus, they wanted to make the Mega Mode a replacement for the two Japanese cockpit scenes. It became a special piloting armor for the rangers in the show. When summoning their zords, Symbol Power would stylize their costumes into awesome armor. The helmets gained mouth plates like the original Mighty Morphin Rangers, giving them a badass and serious aura. The gold ranger's blue accents turned to black like the others, but his helmet stayed the same. The ranger's swords also leveled up into the Mega Blades. They could fold into joysticks for the podiums, and unfold for finishing attacks. An inception of upgrades ensued as the show went on. When a ranger became a super samurai, their mega mode form will gain a white chest plate. The same goes for shark attack mode, with a red chest plate with teal and white outlines. But the form everyone remembers the most is shogun mode. When a ranger put the shogun disc into their belt, they gained authentic samurai armor. Jaden even got to use it outside the cockpit during the final battle like a battleizer. The Mega Mode figures were to Gen Z kids what the Automorphin figures were to Millennials. In the first wave, Bandai released the Core 5 Mega Suits before the regular ones. It created hype for Samurai, as the new Rangers had armor unlike anything before. They also released the mentioned Switch Morphin figures, replacing the MMPR helmets with mass faces. The Mega Blade became a hot item for the holidays, though its folding feature became problematic among parent groups. In the fall, the Gold Ranger got his Mega Figure along with the regular suits. In 2012, Bandai released the Core 5 in Super Mega Mode and the Red Shogun Ranger. There are pictures of the Gold Ranger in Super Mega Mode, but the suit never got any appearances in show but it appeared in a Comic-Con exclusive pack with Mega Shark Red. Speaking of which, he got a smaller figure in the main line with the Shark Zord. It could barely move, but at least it had a removable helmet. Surprisingly, the Shogun mode appeared very early on with the battleized Red Ranger. This 12-inch figure could swap pieces between the Mega and Shogun modes. Bandai made identical figures for blue and gold the next year. Like Super Mode, Gold never used Shogun Mode. Neither did Green or Yellow, despite those suits being Bill. And like with everything else in Samurai, Lauren sadly got snubbed in the toys. She used Super Mega Mode in the show, but her only figure was an exclusive of her base form. After Samurai, Megaforce went back to Sentai cockpit footage. Cockpit modes were a one and done, until New York Toy Fair 2015. Bandai unveiled their summer wave of monsters and powered up rangers. It's unknown why the Saban crew refilmed the cockpit footage for Dino Charge, but they used this chance to introduce this new armor into the show. Unlike Mega Mode, 
Dino Drive creates almost no changes to the suits. It only adds a Dino Charger fiend to chest plate with a second shoulder pad. These remind me a lot of the mission response figures from Overdrive. The Charger part of the armor is yellow to fit with the sash color. Aqua and Graphite also have yellow, despite their sashes being bronze. The Gold Ranger has an aqua color instead, given navy blue is his secondary color. The Silver Ranger has a gold chest piece with a red charge, though it rarely appears outside of B-roll footage. That's because Dino Drive eventually got its own upgrade. Dino Super Drive added Dino Steel armor on the arms and legs, outlined the helmets with silver, changed the gloves colors, and blacked out the mouth plates. These changes give the Rangers a savage and primitive vibe, almost like Dino Thunder Super Mode. The Dino Super Drive Charger and Saber activated this mode. When finishing a monster, the first five Dino Chargers would go inside the sword's barrel. It would then spin to power up. Bandai made plenty of Dino Drive figures. The first five came out in the summer of 2015, with transparent weapons. Gold, Aqua, Graphite, and Purple came out in early 2016. In that same wave, tollage figures of Red, Black, Blue, and Green were also released. Later in the fall, Bandai released the 10 Super Drive figures with different colored sabers. But since Bandai stuffed the market with too many repaints, that's what she said, most stores didn't carry the Super Drive figures. I only found the Black and Blue Rangers by coincidence at a Walgreens a year later. They became a rarity among collectors, costing at least $40 each on the aftermarket. And like the Mega Blade, the Super Drive Saber came out in a toy line. This time, it avoided controversy without a dangerous gimmick. And to represent the drive modes, the hero sets included wearable sashes along with the mask and weapons. Ninja Master Mode stars, lock in! Ha! A few months later, Ninja Steel's toys appeared in stores. One of these was new armored figures, with shuriken pieces that doubled as weapons. In episode 2 of the show, the Rangers use a different cockpit from the Sentai. And you can see where this is going by now. Enter Ninja Master Mode. Like Mega Mode, it appears right from the start. This mode is activated by the Master Mode Power Star, unleashing chess pieces that look like folded shurikens. The Rangers also gained access to the Ninja Master Blade, a chainsaw for some reason. As you'd expect, the Rangers upgraded into Ninja Super Steel mode in the second season. This added black and gold padding to the shoulders and legs. At first glance, I thought the armor looked like something out of Mario Strikers Charge. The Rangers also gave new outlines with their helmets. These may seem like over-designing, but they're secretly brilliant. If you look at the top ends as eyes, the helmets look really similar to the Blaze Zords. Gold is the best example, as you can see the piranha hairs on his visor. For being the 25th anniversary, it's a neat callback to the animal-themed helmets of MMPR. The Rangers also gained access to the Ninja Super Steel Blaster, a bazooka that resembles the Lion Fire Zord. Ninja Steel's modes got the least amount of merchandise compared to the other two. For starters, all six Rangers got their master modes in the 5-inch line. When Super Steel came around, Bandai only released the guys. What's this feminism everyone keeps talking about? Then there are the armored figures. The red, white, and blue rangers came out in early 2017, along with the Rubble Red, Dragon, and Rumble Tusk Zords. Red and blue could use their armor as shields, while white included an extra spinning piece. Yellow, pink, and gold were planned for the fall, but got scrapped eventually. Finally, the respective weapons came out in the roleplay section. The Ninja Master Blade was released in 2017, with the Super Steel Blaster coming in 2018. There were also a few toy-exclusive weapons that never made it to the show, but they were advertised as being part of Ninja Super Steel mode. As Ninja Steel wrapped up the Neo Saban era, so too came the end of cockpit modes. However, there was a hint of this left in the next season. For Beast Morphers, 
Hasbro created many new weapons. One of these is the Cheetah Beast Blaster, which Devin uses to activate Megazord attacks. When he does this, the nose area of his helmet slides down. It's no surprise why everyone calls this the Squidward Helmet. Currently, Dino Fury has original cockpit footage with the new Mega Fury Saber. They might get some new armor later on, maybe in the second season. But for now, it seems the cockpit armor has become a relic of the past decade. Anyways, which is your favorite cockpit mode? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, share, and click the bell to stay updated on the latest videos. If you want more things Coolio, make sure to follow me on social media. Well, I'm Julio, stay Coolio, and thanks for watching everyone!